And there was Blot's body lying not very far. She was having a nap, but her mouth was ajar. If you'd like to know what she's like inside, stick around a while and I'll take you for a ride. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm doing my breathing exercises, ready for today's journey. Remember the last time we went for a trip inside Blood and saw where her food went and what happened to it? Well, this time, I'm going to follow something else into Blood's body. What do you think it is? We have to have it all the time. We breathe it in and out, in and out. Yes, air. Air is all around us, but we can't see it. What can you find out about it? Hi, Blood, the body. How are you? I've come to do some snooping around again to see how healthy you are. In fact, I'm going to get right up your nose today. As always, hope you've got your parachute. Parachute? Don't be silly, Blood. This is easy. I just hang on to these hairy bits and pull myself up. Right, here goes then. Oh, I'm glad I've been doing my exercises. Ugh. Ugh, what's all this sticky stuff here? I'm stuck. I'll just grab onto this. Oh, ouch. Hmm. It's not funny, <laughs> Blood. Yes, it is. I did try to warn you. Well, your nose is not very happy about me trying to climb in that way. Only air can go in, that's for sure. Oh. So why do you think the nose stops any visitors going in? And what do those hairs and that sticky stuff do? Oh, look carefully. Is there something else in the air that noses might hate? What's going into the air here? OK, nose, you win. I'll have to find another way in. Let's think. You don't just breathe in through your nose. There's always your mouth, the same way as the food goes in. Blood, I'm coming in the easy way. Very wise, I must say. We know that food goes down into the stomach. Remember that sack full of acid with the food balls in it? Is that where the air goes to? Let's have a look. <clears throat> well, here's the food pipe. But what's this in front of it? It looks like a lid of some kind. Oh, oh, oh. I nearly got sucked down there. Blood, tell me where I am and where I need to go next. In my throat, and it's not very nice, so go away. Yes, but go where, Blood? Down the food pipe into the stomach? Or do I lift this lid and go down there? What is down there, anyway? My lungs. Yes, that's it. That's where I need to go next. The lungs. It's very, very important that nothing but air goes down into the lungs. That's why you should never put toys or small things into your mouth in case they accidentally get down into the lungs. Right, let's try it then, shall we? Uh. I I think I need a rope for this job. Wow, this pipe is different from the food pipe. It's wide and open for a start. These rings are keeping it open. Any idea why? Oops! Oof. Nearly went then. Oh, do you know what I feel like? I feel as if I've been sucked in by a vacuum cleaner. Hey, Blood, am I nearly there? Not oh. far. I have two lungs. Uh, do you mind which one you go into? Um, are they both the same, Blood? More or less. Well, it doesn't really matter then, does it? Either one will do. Oh, dear. I just run out of room. Phew. Hey, this is rather nice. It's all pink and bubbly. It's full of tubes with air sacs on the end. 
You know, if you spread your lungs out and flattened all the bubbles, you'd be able to cover a whole tennis court. There's not much point having lungs the same size as tennis courts in your chest, is there? So that's why they're all folded up and bubbly. Air is collected in these air sacs. There are thousands of them. I wonder how much air your lungs can hold. Can you think of a way of finding out? How many times do you breathe in a minute? Do you breathe faster when you run? How many times a minute? Seventeen. I've just timed blood and in one minute she breathed seventeen times. But what for? What's the point of it all? Why do we have to breathe in and out all the time? <sighs> There's something very important in the air that we need. We can't see it or smell it or taste it, but it's there. Yes, it's oxygen. And there's no point just staying in the lung. The oxygen has to go to all parts of our body to keep us alive. So how does it get there? Here's a clue in the bunches of air sacs. What are these tiny tubes here? Lord, can you show me how you carry oxygen to all parts of your body, please? This is my blood system. It picks up the oxygen from the air in the lungs and then goes all around the body to my legs and arms and fingers and head everywhere. Thank you. This is where the oxygen gets into the blood. There are tiny little blood vessels in the air sacs. The oxygen from the air goes in. It happens in all the air sacs. <coughs> <coughs> oh, oh, this is, this is terribly fresh. <coughs> Blood? Blood, what's going on? What are you doing? Blood, why have you gone all quiet on me? <coughs> I know. I know what you're doing. How could you do this to me, Blood? <coughs> Let's have a look, shall we? Yes, I thought so. Can you see this? Blood's lungs are starting to go black. This is tar. Horrible, yucky, gooey tar. <coughs> and it comes from smoking cigarettes. Not very healthy at all. Look, if I want a cigarette, why can't I have one? It's my business what I do. <laughs> You're right, Blood. You decide whether or not you smoke. It's your choice. But I bet you'd change your mind if you saw this. What do you think about smoking? <coughs> Dad, Dad, we made a smoking questionnaire in school. Will you help me with it? Go on then. Do you smoke? Yes. What do you smoke? Cigarettes, cigars or pipes? Cigarettes. How old were you when you started smoking? Mm. Seventeen. Dad. How many cigarettes do you smoke each day? Ten. You smoke more than that, Dad. Uh, twenty. Would you like to give up smoking? No. Yes. Oh, I don't know. Well, I think you should. Now then, Dad, let's think about this smoking thing seriously. There are over 4,000 chemicals in cigarette smoke. And every time you smoke a cigarette, you're taking all of them into your body. Some of them are very dangerous. How many do you think make people ill or give them cancer? We know that over 60 chemicals in cigarette smoke can make people very ill and give them cancer. And listen to this, Dad. Every time that you smoke a cigarette, your children and the other members of the family are also getting all those 4,000 chemicals into their bodies as well. That's very, very serious for them, you know. 
And what about the cost of your smoking to the family? Do you know, it costs you more than £800 a year. Just imagine what the family could do with that money. You could take the whole family to Euro Disney for a week. And what about the cost to you? Smoking cigarettes is going to slow you down. Instead of being able to join in with the children's games, you're going to have to sit out on the side. And most worrying of all, smoking could make you very, very ill. Do I want to give up smoking? Yes! Yeah. Oh, no, you two! <laughs> oh. So do you think blood should do something about smoking? Think about what you breathe in sometimes. On the way to school, perhaps, or in town. And what about other people? What are these people breathing in? Think about it. Sometimes, Lungs can have problems with breathing that have nothing to do with dirty air or smoking. Do you have asthma or do you know someone with asthma? People with asthma sometimes have a tight chest and the problem with the breathing starts in the lungs. See these tubes here? When you have asthma, they're closed up and air can't get through them into the air sacs. There is medicine to help people with asthma with their breathing. Some of them make these tubes open. And that lets the air through. But does asthma stop you leading an active life? One of our greatest ever cricket players has asthma, Ian Botham. And so has Kevin Jones, who went to meet him. How long have you had asthma? Kevin, my asthma was diagnosed when I was about 15, 16. I was playing soccer, and I couldn't understand why at half-time I was coming off and I was wheezing and uh, coughing and spluttering. And I went to the doctors and uh, had about three different specialists who gave us three different versions, and eventually I went to an asthma clinic, and they tested me, and they found that I had uh, a sport-induced asthma. Well, how long have you had it, Kevin? I had two to three years, and I know when it comes on, because my chest gets tight. I know the feeling. I use this sort of inhaler. Is it like yours? Yep, Ventolin, that's the one. Yeah, and we've all got to use our own. It's very important. When do you use it? I try not to use it any more than I have to. Um, before we go out in the field to play cricket, I'll take maybe two squirts, and that usually lasts me the day. But uh, sometimes if it's particularly muggy and humid, or it's uh, sometimes or there's a high pollen count, uh, anything can trigger it off, but normally um, as little as possible. Does asthma stop people playing sport? But no, it's never affected me. I've played um, soccer, third and fourth division. I've played uh, cricket, and uh, it's, 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 touch wood, never affected me. But, um, and I think that's why people mustn't be scared of it. If you, if you go to the doctor and the doctor prescribes the medication, which is your Ventolin or whatever, I don't see any reason for you um, not to perform at any level. It's important for us all to exercise. <sighs> that way, we can make our lungs work better. Some people are out of breath running for a bus. But if you've been exercising, then you can go much further without running out of breath. Can you think of how you could make your lungs work better for you? Right then, Blod, you'd be pleased to know I'm coming out of here now, out for some fresh air. So, if I just let myself go, I suppose I'll come out the next time you breathe out, yes? Here you go, then. Oh, dear me. Oh. Yes, back at the throat. You don't like me sitting here, do you, blood? Not particularly, no. It's most uncomfortable. Well, serves you right for sending all that horrible smoke down to me. That wasn't very comfortable either. Right. Now, shall I go out through the nose or the mouth? What do you think? Uh, 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 oh, 
dear. It's Saturday and I think I've got a cold. What's wrong, Catherine? I don't feel very well. What's wrong with you? Got a headache. Yes, you are feeling a little bit hot. Have you got a sore throat as well? Yes. Richard, would you go and ask your father for some telpo, please? Poor Catherine, never mind. The telpo will make her feel better. Dad, Mum wants the telpo. Why does she want the telpo then? Because Catherine's ill. OK, then I'll get it for you now. OK? Thank you. Oh, thank you, Richard. This will make you feel better. Oh, if we run out. Ask your father to take you to the chemist for some more, please, Richard. Oh, I wonder what's in Calpo. The chemist will soon sort it out. Can I have a bottle of Calpo, please? Calpo? Who's ill, then? Is it Ca you? No, it's Catherine. She's got a cold. And you're going to look after her, are you? Yes. How old is Catherine? Nine. Right, I'll get some cowpole. Dad, can we have some of these? These are good for a cold. No, we don't need any of those. But look, hot lemon, cold relief. Who are those for? Catherine. No, Catherine doesn't need these. These contain paracetamol, and cowpole contains paracetamol. To take too much paracetamol can be very dangerous. However, she will need some of these. When she starts sneezing, you don't want to catch the cold, do you? No, thank you. <sighs> Here we are, Catherine. Here's the magazine and the tissues. Thank you. When you sneeze, use the tissue. I don't want your germ. Richard? Yes? Did I have a drink? Okay. Richard? Yes? Please may I have some sandwiches? All right. Oh, and Richard? Yes? Please may I have the radio? You're not ill, you're naughty. Achoo! Don't forget the tissues. I think I better go to bed too. Now that I've caught blood's awful cold. Ah, achoo! Oh, I'll see you next time. If I'm all right, that is. Now that I am tiny, just think where I can go. I must visit every corner till it's time for me to grow. The stomach and the lungs, not forgetting the heart. Large and small intestine, I can get to every part. Clean blood's teeth, lie on her tongue, crawl in her foot pipe, lounge in her lung. Swim in her blood, have a peep at her brain. I'd love to look around and hear again and again. Study her senses, taste, touch, smell. Find out how she hears, how she sees as well. Thank you, Blood, for letting me come in and see and find out what it's like to be healthy.